Hey what's up guys, Benny here and welcome to Xbox On. With Sledgehammer's Call of Duty masterpiece World War 2 just about to arrive on our Xbox Ones, I thought it'd be a great idea to tell you everything that you need to know about the game before you start playing so you can get a nice head start on all your friends. Now, Call of Duty is a game that I get excited for every single year, with it being a game that I've put thousands of hours into over the years, trying to hone and master every single aspect, including the multiplayer, the campaign, and of course, the zombies, which I think this year could rival Treyarch, who a large amount of the Call of Duty community do believe to be the king of zombies. So in this video, I'm going to go over all of that and more, as well as give you some tips which will give you that bit of an edge in Call of Duty World War 2. Where better to start than the multiplayer? Now, you may have already had a little bit of a taster of what to expect thanks to the World War 2 beta earlier this year, but there's going to be so much more for you to do and to get your hands on with the full game. Now, in my opinion, one of the most exciting additions to this year's Call of Duty, which you have to know about, is the inclusion of a dynamic social hub called Headquarters. Think of it like the tower in Destiny. Now, Headquarters has a ton of things that you won't find in other Call of Duties, as well as having other players running around, which helps make that pre-game experience a little bit more enjoyable and also helps bring it to life. It has a live gun range, so you can try out different guns and help get warmed up before a match, a place to practice using score streaks, so you don't feel like you waste them when you manage to earn one in a game, and you can also 1v1 your friends in the 1v1 pit to help you decide who's the better player. You can also earn extra in-game rewards by manning the AA guns and participating in other activities within headquarters. You can even watch live esports events in the theatre and so much more, which is pretty damn awesome. But one of the newest additions to Call of Duty is Divisions, which has completely changed how the class system works in the game compared to previous years. You have five divisions to choose from, Infantry, Airborne, Armoured, Mountain and Expeditionary. But when you hop onto the multiplayer for the first time, you'll be asked to choose a division, and you should base your decision on how you enjoy playing Call of Duty. If you enjoy sniping, you should pick the mountain division, as that division has skills which help you be a better sniper. If you like run and gunning, you should choose airborne, as that division has skills that make it easier to run and gun. And if you're like me and enjoy being an assault rifle player, you should choose the infantry division, as that has skills that help you perform that role a little bit better than someone using the arm or expeditionary divisions for example but if you're unsure which one to pick I'd recommend choosing either the infantry or airborne divisions to start with now as you rank up you'll be able to unlock the other divisions with unlock tokens but the more you use a division the more passive skills you'll unlock which are known as division training which will make you that little bit more effective using that division in a multiplayer game so try to stick to one division at a time when you first start playing once you decide how you want to play the game for example, once you got to level 4 in the infantry division in the beta, you were able to move faster while aiming down sights, which some of you may know as the stalker perk from previous Call of Duties. So you can get a pretty big advantage over someone who plays a little of each division and haven't unlocked all the benefits, especially when the game first comes out, so stick to one division. But one of the biggest things that you're going to notice with World War II, especially if you only started playing Call of Duty in the past couple of years, is the movement is going to be completely different to what you've been used to. There's no longer any of that over-the-top advanced movement where you're running along walls and flying through the air with your jetpack. It's back to basic real-life movement, where it's going to be more about intelligently moving around the map, using cover as much as you can, and not just sprinting all over the place, as it'll be unlikely that you'll be able to survive if an enemy spots you who's just sat waiting behind some cover. Unlike in Infinite Warfare and Black Ops 3, where you could potentially jump out of the way with your jetpack and possibly survive. But I think it's pretty refreshing going back to that traditional movement. And do let me know in the comments if you prefer what Sledgehammer have done in World War 2, or would you prefer having that advanced movement system that we saw in Infinite Warfare and Black Ops 3. Another big change is that the kill cam, which is so famously known in Call of Duty, partially thanks to the trickshot community trying to get the best kill cams in S&D, is gone. But in World War II, they've taken more of an Overwatch style approach, where instead of just the final kill being played, it'll be the best moment in the entire match, which I think is a big improvement and means that you'll no longer get caught out 
if the final kill was slightly embarrassing and took you millions of bullets to take them out. Another big inclusion in World War II is the brand new game mode War, where you play as either the attackers or defenders across multiple objectives in a single game, which helps create some epic moments such as repairing a bridge or escorting a tank to destroy the AA guns, which is a nice change from the regular multiplayer gameplay experience, so it is definitely worth giving a go when you start playing World War II. Now, a mode that I'm extremely excited about with Call of Duty World War II is Nazi Zombies. It's been described as an original, terrifying cooperative mode that unleashes a frightening new horror story for Call of Duty zombie fans. Nothing is as it seems in this zombies horror, as a dark and sinister plot unfolds to unleash an invincible army of the dead. Now, with a large amount of the Sledgehammer team working on Dead Space, this is going to be a far more terrifying zombie mode than we've been used to in the past. You just need to take a look at some of the zombie artwork to get an idea of what to expect. The first mission that you're going to play will take place in a snowy Bavarian village in Mittelberg, Germany, as you attempt to recover priceless works of art stolen by the Axis powers in World War II. The village holds a shadowy secret key to an unimaginable and monstrous power. Now, as always with zombies, the mode will be filled with easter eggs for you to figure out and unlock hidden cutscenes, and a new map will be added to the zombies mode at each individual DLC drop throughout the year, but this is a mode that you're definitely going to want to try out the second you get your hands on the game. And what would a Call of Duty be without an awesome campaign? And this is one I cannot wait to get my hands onto, as the game will kick off with you fighting your way through D-Day on the beaches of Normandy and making your way across Europe in a number of iconic battles like the Hurgan Forest and the Battle of the Bulge. You'll play as Private Red Daniels, and while playing, you may even recognize some of your squad mates, as Sledgehammer have pulled in some incredibly talented actors, such as Josh Dummel, who plays Sergeant Pearson, which just helped create the best immersive single player experience in a Call of Duty game. So definitely make sure you give the campaign a go when you get your hands on the game. Also, make sure to let us know down in the comments below which mode you're going to be playing first. Will it be the multiplayer, the zombies, or the campaign? And if you're new to the channel, do make sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a thumbs up on the video for Call of Duty World War 2, and we'll see you next time with an in-depth multiplayer tips video. We'll see you guys next time. Bye!